we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, Game Source, the great folks at Lakerholics.com, also the wonderful folks at Lakersball.com. I want to thank so much Laker Tom, Jamie Sweet, Sean Grice, Joe Sorrell for coming in for the past couple weeks. Looking forward to having them come back on the show real soon, maybe even on Sunday's game. We'll see what happens there. But also want to thank so much the folks at the Hoop Heads Podcast Network at HoopHeadsPod.com. And any support that you can give all these entities, including us, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, high drama has been the case for the past couple of days since the game that they faltered against Indiana. Although the game against Indiana and the Warriors the next night was even worse because Indiana actually didn't have Levert or several other players, including Sabonis. And they still beat the Warriors there. But the game against the Lakers, which the Lakers truly mishandled in every way, shape, or form, and actually benched Russell Westbrook for the for the final four minutes of the game. A lot of people were really up in arms about that, talking about that all throughout the internet, talking about the tenuous position of Frank Vogel's job, which is something, again, I talked about over a week ago before the rumors were even really picking up. This is something I've been sensing that the team has been in just quite disarray. And with this roller coaster ride of a season, that's what we, I, this week in general has been a microcosm of the Lakers season. Ups and downs and ups and downs. And so far at the end of this week, even though there's still Saturday, who knows what could happen to the team on Saturday on an off day. But for right now, the Lakers end the week as far as on the court. On a better note, as they head into Orlando and after a very sluggish first half where they just seemingly couldn't get any kind of rhythm on either side of the ball, they didn't do that bad. But against the worst team in the NBA with the worst offense in the NBA, you expect a little more. And I think they expected a little bit more of themselves. A lot of frustration started to kick in. And I'm sure there was a little bit of yelling and screaming and conversation going back and forth at halftime because they came out strong. <laughs> you could actually tell that there was a fire lit under someone's behind because the Lakers outscored the Orlando Magic. Again, a truly offensively challenged team, but they did provide good defense on that end and also kicked in 31 points and they outscored them 31 to 16 in the third quarter and basically cruised in the fourth quarter to a 116-105 victory over the Orlando <clears throat> Magic, a game which they needed to have, which they should have had, which they should have each and every time out against the league's worst team. You got to go ahead on this quote unquote Grammy trip, which unfortunately the Grammys have been rescheduled, but right. still got to go ahead on the road, anyways. You got to get this kind of game. And after a performance of 50% shooting for the team, 43 from three point area, and 82 from the line, you got to go ahead and make sure that you win these type of games. With LeBron James scoring 29 points. Russell Westbrook, the much maligned Russell Westbrook, chipping in with 18 points and 11 rebounds and seven assists, plus 11. Also, as well, you had some good performances from Carmelo Anthony, four or five from three, coming back after a, I guess, uh, a terrible defensive performance because he was keyed on, as my good friend Mr. Rafael Barlow noted on Twitter, and so did everyone else that he was keyed on in the final minutes of that Indiana game. He came back strong with 23 off the bench. Plus, the, overall, the team just seemed to, in that second half, seemed to be more aware of what was going on as far as just trying to go ahead and put more effort on the defensive side of the ball. They knew this team was offensively challenged and just go ahead and make sure that they give them tough shots to make. And, of course, the Orlando Magic, true to form as the NBA's worst team, did not make them. But here today to talk about the game – is a guy who maybe possibly is a little bit upset that he didn't go to the game because it meant the <laughs> Lakers' victory. 
He could have been that guy I saw on the feed that was given a choice as far as selection and end up uh, as far as not choosing the one guy on a Disney question Orlando magic player that you do ask and that you do go ahead and select. And that's Robin Lopez who loves Disney. Anybody's asking a question to any of the magic players on a Disney question. That's the guy's answer. You take is the Lopez brother right there for you. And unfortunately he didn't choose that, but still got a trip to trip or four to Orlando's uh, Miss uh, Disney's Magic Kingdom anyways. So here today to talk about that, and the guy who could have had this Magic Kingdom for, uh, four-person pass is a good man indeed. He turned down the game to go ahead and take care of his brand new uh, his brand new son <laughs> and uh, also his well his younger son as well. Two, one and a half? So yeah, one and a half. Almost, almost the best two. Reasons. Almost two, yeah. Almost yeah, two, yeah. almost two. Uh-oh, <laughs> the terrible twos. It is a good man indeed. Yeah. It is TJ Johnson from Pop Culture Cosmos, a man who is here for much of the first episodes that we did. So if you want to check out the older episodes, he's all over them. TJ, great to have you back, my friend. Sorry you didn't make the game. Are you sorry you didn't make the game after all this turmoil going on this season? You know... I have to say I'm not sorry I didn't make the game um, because I had really good reasons to stay home, clearly. Um, oh, but... yeah, yeah. Your kids are awesome. And you still – that doesn't even count your daughter who, you know, is also yeah. just as incredible as well. So. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I had to – the funny thing about my day is I have to find time for – these kids I have to find time with the Oculus. I actually get to do it, but I, I get to spend time with my daughter virtually. We get to paint, and it's, it's actually a lot of fun. Point is okay. – uh, fantastic win for the Lakers. Um, however, Jared, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not excited about this win. I'm not excited about this win at all. Well, you should um, be because they struggled for much of the to, game. Yes, as you alluded to, the first half just completely lackluster. I mean, they ended up putting up 54 points, uh, which I mean, yay against the worst team in the NBA here uh, in the Orlando. The way Magic. they closed out quarters was yes. not good. It was terrible, and I agree with you. Somebody said something to somebody in that locker room because they definitely came out with a point to prove in that third quarter, dropping 31 points and limiting the Orlando Magic to only 16. They definitely had a point to prove in that third quarter, which if I'm the Lakers, I need to find a way to instill that same sense of energy, that same sense of pride, that same sense of, you know, what are we doing? every game i mean truth be told you look at the stat sheet you had five lakers in double digits five lakers in double digits that's the kind of production that you're going to need day in and day out especially when we're still down anthony davis where we're all then they're all still trying to figure out their rotation issues still trying to figure out matchups you're gonna have to have production from your entire team it cannot just be solely on a 37 year old lebron james who is the leading vote getter on the West, but it doesn't change the fact that the man is 37 years old. He is 37 and he cannot do this on his own anymore, nor should he. We should not be asking him to do this at the 18th, 19th year in his career, um, 17th, I think, 17th, 18th. Point is, he's doing a long time and we're asking this man to carry a Lakers team by himself. That's not fair. It's not fair, not at 37. Um, so yes, the Lakers did pull this one out, 116-105. Carmelo Anthony came 19th, up big off the bench. 19th year in I'm sorry. Is it 19th already? Yeah. Goodness, yeah. Time's creeping up. Yeah, 2000, 2003. Yeah. Oh, high 19th. school. High school. My high school. goodness. Ooh. So saying that to say, we should not be asking that of this man. It is asinine for us to be expecting this much workload from him day in and day out. It's it's just, it's not it's it's not realistic. It's not realistic at all. Um, you had Westbrook who actually he played. He he played eight of seventeen from the field. Uh, up Eleven and down boards, again. seven assists. Up and down. It's just not consistent with Russell Westbrook. Now the truth of the matter is, with him always having been such a high usage player, he's always really had an up and down game. He, he's never really been like a uh, 70 percent from the field 60 percent from the field player. He's usually been around 50. I don't know what his career average is. I think it might be sitting around. Uh, See if I can pull it up real quick. His career. Well, I'll take average. my chances with him when he's going to the rim. Other than that, he is absolutely oh. it's an adventure. It's an adventure. Simple, you know, you saw shots that he took yeah. that hit the top of the backboard. You yeah. saw some mistakes, simple he's mistakes career, going out of the bounds. Yeah, it's he's just, a career 43% shooter. 44%. It, it's tough. 
it, it's, it's tough, tough he, watching. He's, he's, he's never been that consistent guy, but because he has such a high usage rate, he always has the ball in his hands. He's still putting up 30 points a game, 40 points a game, because he just keeps shooting and he just keeps doing that. The truth of the matter is he doesn't have that luxury here in the Lakers because the Lakers have to appease other players, the LeBron James, the Anthony Davis is when he's healthy. So Westbrook needs to become find a way to become more efficient like Carmelo Anthony did towards the end of his career. He had to figure out a way to be more efficient with his touches, more efficient with his playing time, and still be able to get his points, but get so without doing all the extra, without getting all the 20, 30 shots a game that he's used to getting as a starter. It's just not realistic. The fact that we finally got Westbrook to go ahead. Well, I was going to say it also helps when you have a team that's so offensively challenged like the Orlando Magic who could not exploit the Russell Westbrooks or the Carmelo Anthonys on the block or on the defensive perimeter like exactly. Indiana could with Karis LeVert in that fourth quarter who scored 22 points on the team. It made it a lot easier because then, like I said, the law of, laws of averages kind of started to go ahead in the favor of the Lakers because Orlando was shooting a little bit above their heads and a little bit above what they have done for most of the season in that first mm-hmm. half. They yeah, knew yeah. you you pretty much expected yeah, to you know, have it. them come down. Yeah, have them yeah. come down down to earth a little bit a little bit more and that's what they did they ended up struggling from the field which is again par for them for the course which is part of the reason right. why they're such a bad team record wise i know they have a lot of components there that i think for the future could be good but for right now it's not very pretty in the magic kingdom but yeah it, when it comes to the lakers again the thing that stuck out to me was the effort and the thing that shows up in the box score is the most important thing that I've seen. That is something that they haven't been able to do very much is win the rebounding battle as they won 45 to 35, something mm-hmm. that, you know, a lot of times is based off of effort. Do you want that ball more yeah. than that other? Yeah, individual? it's a hustle play. A and, hustle we want, and we saw that today, especially in that second mm-hmm. half. Uh, and Stanley mm-hmm. Johnson with 11 points and five rebounds, nothing really sticks out on the box score. But if you saw him in the game and you saw his his hustle, especially there in the second half, giving the team a lift, just that type of effort that he gives, I think that inspires the team. And I think that it's you know him staying on the team long term would be a good decision for at least the rest of the season. Yes. I think that would probably yes. be something that I think would be beneficial for the team. You also have Malik Agreed. Monk with 10 points, but. I think with Malik Monk, I think he needs to be in that starter. But the problem is he's so defensively uh, substandard. He, mm-hmm. He's such a liability on defense. It's very hard to keep him in that starting lineup, even though it I is. think that's when he prospers the most because he gets more minutes and more touches, yeah. which I think is better than having Avery Bradley. It's fun because if we could hybrid Avery Bradley yep. exactly. and Malik Monk, we'd have the player – that we would want on the Lakers Either one team. of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But that's the you problem. Know, I, think, I think the I think the one of the big keys for the second half, and absolutely everything you said was correct. I think one of the big keys for the second half is that they decided to start LeBron James at the five. They ended up pulling Dwight Howard out of that starting center position, starting the second half, threw LeBron into the five, and they immediately opened up with a twenty to I want to say it was twenty to two run. Yeah, to something like that. The, I think it was twenty quarter. to two, yeah. twenty to four. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was an insane run, and it, and it just goes to show you that when this Lakers team is clicking, when everything is clicking, and when they finally just make a decision to just go and just play and x out all the noise, because you have to you have to realize, and obviously LeBron has been in Lakers for a few years now, so he he might get this more than obviously a Westbrook does, but there's so much noise that comes with playing in Los Angeles. There's so much extra. Everything is heightened. Everything is magnified. The fact that there's now a hot seat for Coach Frank Vogel, who just a couple years ago <clears throat> was a championship winning coach with this team. Yep. And he's already on a hot seat. So everything in Los Angeles is magnified. It is what it is. You understand that when you put on the purple and gold armor. That's just what it is. If these guys can figure out a way to block the noise, block out the extra, and just play basketball. These are all NBA-level basketball players. They all need to produce like NBA-level basketball players. The problem is you have the Westbrooks of the world who've, who've gotten exposed, who have been exposed for a long time, but because they've been the center focus of their team, they've been able to overshadow that because they have such a high usage rate. Well, now your usage rate isn't up to what it used to be, and you're still playing the same type of basketball that you did. So now he's exposed, and we have to figure out a way to either work with that or we need to figure out a way to move that. I'm hearing rumors that the Rockets are another trade destination for Westbrook again. For John Wall, I don't think that's a good idea. 
but you know, it's a lateral rumors. move because it's a lateral you, move exactly you bring in another old guard that yep has doesn't have a jump shot so it really yep. does does nothing for you that doesn't really yep. do a whole lot on the defensive end outside of steals and that's really mm -hmm. something that i don't think that the team needs i think they need to go ahead and look in a different direction or mm -hmm. just sit on his contract until the summer or next year yep. when his 44 million dollars roughly comes off the books you could mm -hmm. keep him through next season and deal with that or you could use it as a much bigger trade asset because right now you're only going to get a rotational player for at Russell best. Westbrook. Yeah, at best. You're not yeah. going to get an all-star. You're not going to get a, a franchise-changing player next summer or and next and next year because of the fact that he has that very lofty salary that's going to come off the books, he will be much more valuable as a trade asset than than right now. And that's simple yeah. it goes right out there people are going to, it's going to have to uh, Laker is have to Laker fans gonna have to come to grips with this. Is that right now? If you tried to trade him, it, you're going to get less on the dollar. I would say, as far as to paraphrase something like that, less on the mm -hmm. dollar than you would if you hold on to him for the summer or maybe actually maybe even through next, you know, through right. sometime with the trade deadline by the trade right. deadline next year. So I'm just gonna say right now, you know, the Lakers do need major changes. Do they? You know, they need to go ahead and look into trading Russell Westbrook? Absolutely. But I just don't think yeah. they're going to get what they want or find what they need to go ahead and transform this team. All they can do is make some small incremental changes, even with the offers of THT and Kendrick Nunn and a first, late first, like 2027 or 2028. Doesn't really matter at this point because that's not going to get you a whole lot. At this point in time, the Lakers are who they are for all intents and purposes, and we better come to grips <laughs> with that. Right yeah. now, they are a 500 team. I'm hoping that they'll have a, some kind of push that they can give them, uh, what, maybe three, four, five games up above 500. But it's going right. to be a very tough trip right now because this is the annual Grammy trip, even Grammy though the trip. Grammys yep. did get delayed. Yep. I want to go ahead and talk yep. to you about that in a sec. But is the Lakers 116 to 105 over the Orlando Magic pulling away in the second half? They are currently right now at 23 and 23 at 500 in seventh place in the Western Conference. Upcoming, my friend, before we head on out, I want to tell you about the murderer's row coming up for the Lakers on this trip. And I want to hear your thoughts on exactly how well do you think they'll finish out on this trip? Here we go. At Miami on Sunday, at Brooklyn on Tuesday, at Philadelphia on Thursday, at Charlotte on Friday, and at Atlanta a week from Sunday. So there you have it, my friend. One, two, three, <sighs> four, five, five games. I think all of them will be tough, even though I know Atlanta has been even more disappointing than the Lakers. I still think at home, Trey Young, that's going to be a tough game for the team. Your thoughts on what they need to do and what they will end up doing on this road trip. Ooh, well, you know, you look at all those teams and the only one that I'd be confident in saying, hey, this is probably going to be a good win is Philly. And that's the only one that I would, I even hesitate to say that. I really do. Um, this is going to be a tough swing for these guys, especially, like I said, you're going into Miami right after today's game, which makes perfect sense. You go right to Miami. Then you got Brooklyn, who, granted, we'll see what's going on with KD. Um and and help me help me remember. Does Kyrie play at home games? Cannot play. No, oh, he can't play Still. home games. It'll be just Ooh. Harden. It'll just be Harden. Okay, well, we might be able to pull that one out too. I say out of these next was the five games. Five games. Yep. The next five yep. games, we need we need to be we need to be at a plus. We, I, we need to be at a plus two coming out of these these games. I, I say they I go at best three and two. At best, they're going to go I think three at and best two. Three and two. I think so too. I think, and that's that's an at best scenario. I'm really thinking they go two and three. I'm thinking I'd expect Philly, and I'd expect now that we know that Kyrie's not playing uh, the Brooklyn game, and we're still up in the air about KD. I'd I'd say two and three because Miami's playing halfway decent ball. Um, Charlotte's playing decent. Atlanta's playing up and down as usual, but I'd expect two and three. I, I have a hard time giving them the plus one. I do. I do. And the most important question, as far as that's <laughs> concerned, when they land in L.A., 
mm-hmm. a week from I would say it would be good. It's going to be a week from Sunday late after the game and against Atlanta. They'll probably fly straight home after the game, so it'll be landing late on Sunday night West Coast time, a week from mm-hmm. Sunday. Mm-hmm. Will Frank Vogel still have his job by the time he lands on that? Time? <sighs> I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that question because you know I, I know went I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Will he have a job? I don't know. I don't know if he'll have a job. Should he have his job? Absolutely. That's a different question, my friend. Should he have his job? I know that's a different question. The first question I answered, I don't know if he's going to have his job. I am really having a hard time seeing him, if he keeps this job throughout this season, him being here next season. I I have a hard time seeing that uh, right now. The problem is we live in a very take care of me now type of scenario in in type world. And it's a, what have you done for me lately scenario? And these players, I just want us to make sure we hold the players to the same standard that we hold these coaches to. It's okay for us to want to rotate through these coaches when they start not doing what they're supposed to do, not performing. Uh, The team's not responding to them anymore. I get it. I get it. But we also have to remember it's the players that play the game. The coach can only give them the, the scheme. The coach can can draw up plays. It is up to the players to go out there and perform. And asking, and he's he's playing with the heart, the cards that he was dealt. Uh, let's be clear, he he has no say so over if if he has this person uh, traded to his team or this person brought onto his team or this person signed on. That's not his call. Some may say it's LeBron's. Some may say it's LeBron and AD's call together. But the bottom line is it's not Frank Vogel's. I can guarantee you Frank Vogel has no say so in any of the above. So if I'm going to be fired, I want to be in control of what I'm being fired for. Give me the team that I want. Give me the players that I want. And let me go to work if you're going to fire me for it at the end of the day anyways. I think it's unfair for him to be on his hot seat. I think it's unfair for us to be calling for his job at this point in the season when just a season and a half ago he was an NBA champion level coach. It's not fair, um, but it's the world that we live in. And He's had the hot seat from day one when Jason Kidd was. Yes, right when that. Jason Kidd was right behind him, right, right on his heels, right on his heels. He's had the hot seat. He won a championship, and you would have thought that you would have thought that that would be enough to kind of get people off his back. But no, it's not enough. And the special and when he got like an extension, earlier, he only got a one Angeles. year extension. It's Los Angeles. That's what we're talking about. And he only got an extension because uh, I think LeBron signed that extension to stick around for another two or three seasons. But it was um, only a one year extension. It was only one year extension for Vogel, so that was it. Yeah. So yeah, he's been on the hot seat, like you said, from the beginning, and it's it's not fair. It's not fair, but it is what it is. So, will he be the coach coming back into Los Angeles? I think so. I I, I do think so. Um, will he make it out of LA? Or will he make it back to LA after this season is concerned? I'm like the magic eight ball. All signs point to no. <laughs> all signs point to no. Well, I agree with you, my friend. I think that it's not fair that he, so much pressure is on him. I think yeah. that a lot of it is out of his control. Yep. Do I think he'll still have his job even if they go 0 and four, 0 and five for the rest of the road trip? Uh, it really, yeah, I don't know. 0 and five I, is different. 0 and five, 0 and is different. 5 0 and or five, two yeah. and three. Uh, two and three, I think he's okay. 0 and five, I yeah. think we're, we're talking about something different. Do I think he yeah. still has the job by the trade deadline? Uh, you know, that's another question entirely. That, then it really gets into a lot of ifs there. But yeah. I think that if the Lakers do win two games on the trip, that he'll still keep his job, especially if they're impressive wins on the road, maybe against one of them, like a Brooklyn or against Joel Embiid, who's playing outstanding in Philadelphia. So we'll see what happens. If they can pull off a couple yeah. of those wins this week, I think that will ease a lot. They'll still be a game under 500 when they get back, but you know what? It'll be a, a situation where they're three and three overall on the road trip. So I think that right. that'll be a fair enough indeed. But once again, it's TJ Johnson, my good friend, man who is here for much of the early days here at the Lakers fast break. You can find him on some of our most recent episodes of the pop culture cosmos talking about Activision and Blizzard getting bought out by Microsoft. And part two of my conversation comes up on Monday with him. So my friend, just great having you on the show. Any last Absolutely. thoughts on the Lakers before we head on out? You know, it's tough Laker Nation, but we got to stick with them. This, this is our team. We bleed purple and gold around here. And, and we come hell or high water, we, we ride with our team. Absolutely. That we do indeed. 18. We'll get to 18 before Boston. 
That's what we need to do. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's as long as we get to 18 minutes. first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as long as we get to 18 good. first, we're good. We're good. But my friend, it's been great having you here. Kenneth, thank you so much. Sorry you didn't get to go to the game, but you've got some wonderful reasons why at the house. I still think Absolutely. you should have been that guy getting that four-pack at the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been sweet, man. That would have been sweet. Well, they had another guy that was there walking to one of those cash booths, you know, with the air that pops up and all the, you know, the money's flying around and whatnot for charity and also forget him a hundred bucks. You could have been that guy too. I'm thinking to myself, every time I they had a timeout and they did one of those gimmick games, I'm like, yep, that, that could have been, been TJ. Me. That could have been you, my friend. That's you know what? Right. <laughs> when you look at look at your both look at both your kids that are around the house, yep. it's all worth it, my friend. It's all good. Absolutely. So you can remind them 10 years, 15 hours long. 15 years down the line. You made me miss the Orlando oh, Lakers yeah. game. Oh man, I've got I've got ammunition all day. I'm from dirty diapers, all that. I'm I'm stacking them like draw fours. Okay, so wait. you better get A's. You yeah. better get straight A's. <laughs> That's right. That's My right. friend, it's just been awesome having you on. I'm looking forward to having you back on not only this show but the Pop Culture Cosmos. Once again, the Lakers do win in a strong second half performance, 116 to 105. We will be back as far as the Lakers fast break. I'm hoping I can get so many other people to join me. Maybe the Lakerholics crew, maybe Joe Sorrell, maybe even TJ. Who knows who will join me, but it will be Sunday after the game. I want to go ahead and mention for everybody out there that's listening on the West Coast, the game is early once again. Remember, all these games coming up over the next week are very early games for us out there on the West Coast. The next game is in Miami. Sunday at 3 p.m. start time. So we'll probably be on Facebook right around 5.30, between 5.30 and 6, West Coast time, right there at Lakers Fast Break on Facebook. So please join us then for the post game. We'll be talking about what happened in Miami. Do Will they spend too much time in the clubs in Miami? We'll find out <laughs> Sunday night right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. <laughs>